Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. We are doing three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. I'd like to welcome two new guests to this segment. We have Anil Ganju, he is the Chief Growth Officer at HCL Tech. Hello welcome, there. Welcome, Anil. And David Stark, GM and VP Aruba Networking Telco Solutions at HPE. Thank you both for Hi. coming on theCUBE. Hi guys. Hi there. Hi. So Anil, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the partnership between HCL Tech and HPE? Well, you know, Rebecca, the partnership is actually nothing new. The partnership actually was struck 40 years back by HCL Tech with HPE. And so we had a joint venture between HCL and HPE and the companies called HCL Hewlett Packard about 40 years back in India. Now in the last few years, that has been a very different partnership where we have been working on HP GreenLake hybrid cloud solutions. Uh, then we've also been working on Aruba networking solutions. Most recently, actually, it's Aruba Telco solutions, as well as private 5G Ethernet-based solutions that this partnership is extended to most recently. And I think we're also looking at some new service line areas like Edge, which is where we'll be using Aruba network with data and uh, Esmeral as one of the other platforms of HP. So there's a lot on Gen AI and AI-based solutions, network solutions, and cloud hybrid solutions. And Anil, your scope is, is more than just telco, or are you telco focused? No, we, we, it's more, much more right, than... I mean you personally. Yes, right. I, I look after not just telecom, I look after media and entertainment, the technology industry, retail, CPG industries. So the reason I ask is, David, I'm interested in your thoughts on what's different about telco um, from sort of the broader enterprise, and maybe Neil could sort of give us some context there as well. Well, I mean, the, the, if you like, the, the obvious short answer is speed. And, and, and part of that is enterprises put in systems and technology for their own, their own use. It's a single customer. I mean, obviously, you have more complexity in some enterprises, but in general that is. Telcos worry about providing services across everything, in some cases from consumers, through a Soho, SME, up to MNCs. And that is a, a much harder thing to do in terms of providing a reliable service, almost ensuring, if you like, there's always dial tone. So that change to a, a telco's network and its infrastructure, it's a lot harder to do. It needs to often come with a lot more thought and heavy lifting, and that's why speed is different. But having said that, telcos often would like to be like an enterprise and, and move at speed. And that, for, for us, is the, if you like, interesting opportunity, an interesting opportunity to work with people like HCL. So longer go to markets, maybe you had to do some unnatural acts and customizations and, and the like, but we all know the story of the telcos. They built out you know, trillions of dollars in CapEx, and on the over at the top vendors came in and said, thank you very much, now we'll just take the customers. And the telcos are very vocal, but we cannot let this happen again. If we're going to spend all this money on 5G, we have to move faster. So, how are you guys helping customers in, the, in the, this industry both move, move fast, but at the same time, live up to their heritage of we don't break. And when we break, you don't know it. <laughs> you know? Um, we saw that during the pandemic. You know, we didn't miss a beat. From a, We switched to landlines in many cases, but you know, telcos didn't get much credit for that, but they were the reason why. How do you simplify things so that they can move faster? So first of all, telcos are all pervasive, you know. There is nowhere in this world that you can be without a telco. Now telcos are also evolving. As you rightly said, there was a lot of tech debt that telcos have built up over time. They're competing with the bond digital companies. So now this is where we are differentiating. We're helping them reduce their tech debt, number one. We're helping them in modernizing a lot of their platforms. In fact, this partnership is a lot about network transformation and modernization. Simplification of things, modernization of platforms, which is really, what is it helping telcos and other enterprises do? It's helping them build customer loyalty, improve customer experience and journeys, 
and basically a lot of data that telcos have through consumers like you and I monetize that by recognizing who your consumers are and reach out to them rather than the digital bond digital company. So there's a lot of a lot of that transformation that firms like us are helping them through the network transformation and experience management. Right, and there were a lot of promises around NFV early on, and you know, you talked to the telcos, they were like, eh, it didn't really get us the outcomes that we wanted. Now, David, there's a big push toward open. And that's somewhat antithetical to the history of telco, but how is that going, and how are you guys sort of helping customers you know, maintain again that sort of reliability and at the same time, BO, HPE's always been an open company, HCL, you're agnostic to technology. Yeah, yeah. Very important issue right now. It, it absolutely is. So, I mean, in a way, all, all of these kind of um, technology revolutions are usually about timing, they're not a, an if, they're a when. And sometimes you just need a bunch of things to line up for them to start happening and, and we can, you know, so I'll take an example and one, one where we're, we're pretty focused uh, in, from a telco solutions point of view is ORAN. So there was a great expectation that ORAN would come along and it would, you know, revolutionize and, and enable, um, you know, telcos to choose best of breed, get commercial leverage, be able to, you know, plug things in and out, you know, as they change vendors, et cetera. And obviously the market hasn't reacted in that way for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, it goes back to not least one of the things Anil said, which is technical debt. You know, to bring in new technology, you have to have the right systems and processes and be able to actually justify why you're changing technology out. So that's why I say timing really matters. But what we're now beginning to see is absolutely the movement of the, the industry in terms of you know, starting off with VRAN and, and, and starting to see trials of ORAN as well. And that's where, if you like, going back to your original point on N NFV, you're beginning to see that approach to technology you know, actually become something that people are doing because there's a reason now to do it. And from our point of view, what we want to do is provide that network orchestration automation for the telcos so they get some of that speed and that ability to, you know, kind of manage life cycles around microservices or CNFs or whatever. Uh, but our challenge, and this is why, you know, I'm here with, with my, my friend Anil to talk about you know, HP and, 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 and HCL is, you know, part of the technical debt is how do you integrate those new capabilities into the, uh, in some cases, you know, living IT entropy that is the, the 30 years of, of telcos. And, um, you know, we, part of it is having very strong SI partners that can work with our products and make, you know, that promise real around the orchestration automation. So that's, that's kind of where we're coming from. Sometimes you feel like entropy's winning, but it's your job to <laughs> make sure that indeed, doesn't happen. Indeed. <laughs> so Anil, where are, speaking of that, what do you see are these areas of the go-to-market that you are going to strengthen the partnership? Sure, I, I think, um, you know, we were already partnering on the hybrid cloud front of GreenLake, but now as per this morning's announcements by Jensen and Antonio, this is now going to go four steps ahead with AI built in and factory level of scaling. So you can clearly imagine that will be first big area where we will be partnering in a big way. The second is, again on the Aruba network front, again they're going to be infusing it with Gen AI. That's another second place where we are going to be extending this partnership. Ethernet, uh, which is the private 5G implementations to execution and operations, is another big place where we are looking at partnering. Edge, so many solutions which are edge to cloud, connectivity, leveraging data, leveraging HPs, you know, products and services. And finally, a, as NVIDIA's partnership with HPE and HCL Tech's partnership with both NVIDIA and HP, I can see a lot of triangulation of AI and Gen AI based models that we have been working on and dedicated labs that we are partnering on to go to market to enterprise customers and telcos to monetize what they have been spending a lot of money on. That was February of 23 at MWC when HPE announced the acquisition yes. of Athenet. 
it was actually quite ironic because it was right after Dell announced a partnership with them. So it was very good timing <laughs> by HPE. I remember we were talking about it on theCUBE. So what is the status now of private 5G? What's adoption look like and how do you guys work together to help customers take advantage of that capability? So in terms of uh, adoption, I mean, it, it does vary a bit by, by, by vertical industry segment and even geo, because, I mean, not least geo, because it's just a, a, a simple matter of where's spectrum available and uh, what for. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of segments, I mean, certainly from uh, an Athernet point of view, I mean, there's there's a lot in public sector, emergency services, et cetera, in mining, um, you know, sort of um, transportation, you know, ports, airports, et cetera. So we've, we've seen good traction there. I think generally all of us have seen that kind of proof of value, proof of concept approach. You know, we're, we're beginning to see from a, an Athernet point of view, more and more actual uh, adoption of it, but I think you know, depending on where you are in the market, there is still that um, you know, what's the business case? What's the justification? What's what's the need for for certain bits of the industry? But what you have seen, you know, certainly. Um, uh, HP do in, in, in the last kind of week or so is we've announced our Aruba private fi uh, enterprise private 5G uh, offer and that really goes back to the fundamental reason of why did we buy Athernet because we see that convergence between um, you know Wi-Fi and private 5G, the single pane of glass making private 5G as easy to deploy a, a, as Wi-Fi and we still strongly think that is what our customers want and when we talk to you know large enterprise customers, the service provider channels, they're absolutely still on that page. So that bringing together and using private 5G as an infill definitely sells resonance in the market. So I would say, you know, it's kind of um, good progress. You know, it's not, you know, there's no, I think, dramatic change from what we expected. Um, uh, and, and we're looking forward to, you know, particularly working with people like HCL to kind of deploy that. And that's one of the things we, Anil and I were, were meeting about earlier on. How do we take that to market yeah. with, um, with an SI capability as well? So we're combining the two strengths of both the companies their products and experience and all the service offerings. We've got joint labs in which we are discussing of making investments, building these, not just POCs or proof of values, but some things which we'll take to the customers, build their business case, and then make it easy for them to deploy at scale. But that's what we are talking about. Another, thank you for that. So another thing I want to ask you about is, you know, telcos have always had an affinity for sovereign. See, right? I mean, whether it's public policy, local regulations, uh, countries wanting their, you know, have a strong telco for their citizens. Now, sovereign AI is this big trend. Uh, you're hearing it in all the earnings calls. Uh, we heard it in HPE's earnings call recently. How real is it? How do you see that playing out? Um, where, where are the cloud guys in all that? And, and, and how do you see the partnership facilitating things like sovereign AI? I think AI definitely, as you heard from uh, you know, Jensen, Antonio, everyone, AI is getting more and more real, and AI is getting actually deployed by a lot of players, be it from the cloud side to the private cloud providers to the pure operators, including in products, building of new products, as well as customer services. Everywhere AI and Gen AI based solutions are getting infused. We are doing it in a lot of operations that we run for some of the largest enterprises. A lot of those operations today are getting infused by AI and Gen AI based solutions. By the way, these enterprise customers are expecting us to be deploying a lot of things that we are talking about for future. They're saying that future is today real and that's what is allowing us to infuse that. While we work on newer technology based products that they can be releasing in the marketplace. Yet, everyone expects a couple of additional things. Responsible AI, uh, which is getting very real and there are a lot of regulations involved in it, policies getting where we are all involved. And the second thing is sustainable AI, which is also getting equally real. So we are working with at a semiconductor level, chip level, equipment manufacturer level, software company level, and the complete data center level of all the issues 
which is associated with huge workloads moving to AI, but power consumption, energy, utility, everything that needs to be reduced so that it is sustainable AI. Anil, David, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really fascinating conversation. Rebecca, always a pleasure. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.